Okay, looks like I, I have another tricky biopsy case here. I'm not really sure what's going on with this one. Looks like we got some areas that almost look a little bit papillary. It looks like there's some hemorrhage associated with it. This weird hyalinized stroma. Oh, some of these biopsies, these lung biopsies can be so tricky. Well, I got this new book. Let's see, where did that book go? Oh, yeah, it's this like thoracic book written by Sanjay. I wonder what they would say about this lesion. Because I was thinking I might just order a Vimentin on it, but I wonder if there's something else I could do. Oh, <laughs> there, there's Sanjay. Sanjay, w w what would your book say that I should do with this? Thank you, Matt. This is a this is a great book to have by your side. And Vimentin, never, never for anything. <laughs> but you do uh, you do need some immunostains here. I, is this biopsy from a woman? Yeah, this biopsy is from a woman. Yes. All right. So I think like she's younger too. Says, this is a great clue if the biopsy is from a woman and has these features. So a couple of things that I noticed, Matt. So if you can point to it, there is an area of sclerosis on the right-hand side of the biopsy. I think there's some over right. here, right? Yeah, yeah, that's great. There's sclerosis. There are some foamy macrophages at the bottom, detached foamy macrophages. Yeah, like there. And then the cells themselves are a bit, um, although it's cellular, it's not all that malignant looking. So cytologically yeah. malignant. See right? that, yeah. Yeah. You see that. And then Matt, if you just stay in this field, you'll see that on the left-hand side of the leftmost fragment, there are some hobnail looking cuboidal cells. Yeah, and definitely. Keep going down that, yeah, like that guy there. Yeah. That almost look like reactive type two pneumocytes. They're big and funky looking, but they have small yeah. nuclei. Agree, yeah, definitely see that, thanks. Correct. And then if you look at the stroma under it, like the interstitium, you've got these bland cells in the interstitium in there. Yeah. Just below those hobnail cells, correct? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I see those. Yeah. So if you read our book, you'll see that there's a section that describes the two cell population in, in this tumor. And I, I suspect that's what this is. Did, did you want to show that figure from, from the... Yeah, let me, let me share it. So I'm going to share screen now. And let me know when you can see it, okay? I can see it. All right. So here's a picture from the uh, survival guide book. As you can see in A, we've got the same two cell population that you have in your biopsy. Yeah. So there's a stromal cell population that the arrowhead, that the sm small arrow shows. See these bland cells in the interstitial? Yeah. And then we've got those type two pneumocyte looking cells on the surface, the so-called surface cells. Yeah, that the longer arrow points to, right? Yes. And then part B shows the same thing at higher magnification, but with the sclerosis, same as you're in your biopsy. And part C shows the two stains. So I would suggest that uh, two stains would really solve your problem. And that would be a TTF1 and a, some sort of a cytokeratin stain, ban A1A3, pankeratin, CK7. So part C shows you a TTF stain. And when you do your TTF on your biopsy, what we're expecting is that both the surface cells and the stromal cells will be positive for TTF1. So in other words, all the cells of interest will be positive. But when you look at your keratin stain, which is part D of the picture, you'll see that the surface cells stain strongly and diffusely, but the stromal cells are either negative or weakly positive. Yeah. So there's a dichotomy when you do the keratin stain, but uh, everything is positive on the TTF1 stain. So do you want to do those stains and show yeah, it? Yeah, let, let me see. I think I have those actually. Oh, okay. Let, let's see, see what I have here. Okay, I'm just going to switch over here. So you can see my screen there. I can, I can, yeah. I think luckily, uh, I think a very intelligent resident had done some stains on this case. And oh, wow. he, here's my nice cytokeratin. And I, I, very similar to the case you showed, I have the lining cells that are staining, but these these round cells in the middle are are really not staining, maybe a little bit of weak staining. And yeah. then, the, the, but the TTF1 is highlighting everything, both the surface cells and round cells. Yeah. So I, I think this does fit for sclerosing pneumocytoma. Correct. Which would be a really good biopsy, um, you know, diagnosis to make on a small biopsy. Yeah. Because traditionally, this thing has been made on resections, you know, yeah. uh, su surgical resections, lobectomies, wedge resections. So if you can make a benign diagnosis on a small biopsy like you, you're doing here, I think you can uh, do a big favor to the patient and, the, and help out the surgeon in terms of management. 
That's really helpful. Are, did, did these things get used to be called sclerosing hemangiomas? Yes, correct. Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, this sometimes when you if when you look at a resected specimen, you'll see that they sometimes have these big blood-filled okay. lakes in them, which can look like vascular spaces. So initially, when Dr. Lebo described this um, in the way back in the 20th century, um, he made a great observation that this was a unique tumor. But b without the benefit of immunohistochemistry, there was no way to prove that uh, this was vascular. But it, it looked vascular. And there was sclerosis, so it was called sclerosing hemangioma. Now, of course, we know with immunohistochemistry that these are these spaces are not vascular. Yeah, it's in a weird staining pattern, though. These TTF1 positive cells that are negative for pankeratin, you know, do do those represent any normal cell in the lung? Like, what are these? I don't think so, Matt. I mean, I think there's a little bit of a um, controversy, or you could say, a gray area or a hole in our knowledge here. The surface cells do have the phenotype of normal, you know, alveolar pneumocytes. Um, they are TTF positive and keratin positive, just like alveolar pneumocytes would be. But I think the WHO considers this part of the tumor. It's actually a second. Mm -hmm. So, so the two cell population, the assumption is that that's the second cell part of the tumor. But the immunophenotype is identical to normal um, alveolar pneumocytes. But the, your your point is well taken. The stromal cells, like the round cells in the mm -hmm. interstitium. Um, there is no counterpart to that in the normal lung. There's, there's no cell that is strongly TTF1 positive, but completely keratin negative or, or only weakly keratin negative. So there's yeah. no great counterpart to that in the normal lung. What do you think, Matt? What's your idea about what these cells might be? It's probably maybe some immature precursor that then expands um, from, you know, uh, from embryonic remnant or something, or, or some some cell develops a premature phenotype and then is positive for TTF but negative for keratin. But I suppose yeah. it's hard to prove that. <laughs> hard to prove. Yeah. But uh, I think that's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's fair to assume that because it's TTF positive, there's something vaguely epithelial about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I think this is a really helpful case. And, and I'm really glad that I had this book that you know could help me walk me through some of these challenging biopsy um, uh, specimens and, you know, if you're interested in, in checking out, you should check it out. It's coming um, in press in sometime in 2022. Um, yeah, and thanks everyone for watching this. And we hope you also learned something as well about this rare but important entity. Thank you, Matt.